Welcome back. We're going to start the next session. We have the first one to start. OK, so uh, the next session is uh, Razvan Ionescu. He's going to talk about broadcast internet fuzzing framework for Android. Go for it. Hi, everyone. Um, first, thank you for joining this session. My name is Razvan. And uh, so to say, I have uh, multiple identities. First of all, um, I'm a security QA engineer working for Intel. Um, I have uh, three years' experience so far. On the right side, you may see some other kind of identity of m myself. Um, I was a kind of survivor. Survivor, you know, maybe the show from uh, US television. Well, uh, there was also an edition in Romania at uh, Rezhnov. And I was one of the participants of that edition. Some other identity. Actually, it's a kind of hobby I enjoy a lot, and I play when I have time. Um, it's called geocaching. Do you know this kind of thing? Are there any geocachers in the room? Cool. Um, here you may see one of my latest uh, discoveries until so far. Uh, it's a newspaper post from, um, from a city um, very close to the Pacific Ocean, nearby Santa Clara. And uh, yeah, you may do a lot of things with this uh, kind of hobby. You may uh, visit places through the eyes of some local people who wants to share with you some beautiful views and um, you know portraits and so on, landscapes, sorry. And uh, also you can do some other cool things. For example, you may ask your future wife to propose her using geocaching. You may just um, go, for example, with her. And instead of finding a geocache, you, she may find a, a ring or so. Well, let's get back to business. I'm here today to present you an open source project. It's called Broadcast Interphasic Framework for Android. And uh, today, I have uh, discovered um, how can you enclose this project into a joke. Um, there was a speaker called Cristiano on the opening session, and he told a lot of jokes regarding uh, a credit card goes in, walks into a bar. Well, my joke goes like this. Maybe you know. A QA tester walks into a bar, and he asks for a beer. He asks for zero beers, for minus one beers, for 99.99 beers. He asks a lizard. And he tries not to pay. And the bartender says, well, have you thought that we may raise you an exception? That was my joke. So um, for today, I will propose you some questions, like why, what, how, who, and where. And of course, I will provide you the answers to those questions. And also, in the end, I would like you also to hear some questions from you and some, uh, I know, ideas in order to improve those, this project. Well, why have we, have we built this project? Well, how many of you are Android users? Pretty much all of you. OK. And how many of you do you care about security when it comes uh, to mobile devices? OK. So. Android operating system is a pretty important target due to the fast spreading rate among the end users. So this operating system is very, very spread, and um, it's very important to be secure from this point of view. Well, one of the methods in order to test if an application, as a developer, um, in order to test if your application you have just developed is secure, is by uh, fuzzing intents. What is this? Well, as you probably know, uh, in Android, there are so-called 
inter-process communication mechanism. And one of them is through intents. One activity is sending an intent to another activity in order to open it, or it passes some data, and so on. Well, um, those, those uh, intents, as you will see later, have sort of parameters. And through this project, we have tried to manipulate those parameters. Um, pro BFAS, this project, uh, is written in Python. It's open source. It was uh, licensed under MIT license at the beginning of this year. And more than that, um, we have used KV. KV is an open source Python framework where you write Python code and it generates through a bulldozer an Android APK. So founding this kind of environment, this kind of framework, we have just made, um, I say, a big step from a local application running on a Linux device to a single standalone APK. Well, from architecture point of view, because any project must have kind of a, an architecture, uh, basically you can connect multiple devices in the same time. It may be also different kind of Android devices um, to a Linux host machine. And BFAS <clears throat> has multiple modules. You may see that it has a data collector, which it extracts data uh, based on the dumpsies of each package. And having this data collected, it generates afterwards intents. Um, as output, we may have, of course, error logs, seed files, delta reports, and this APK I have told you about. Well, what is the seed file? For example, uh, by running multiple intents, multiple calls, so to say, um, an application may crash, but it, it may not be because of that particular uh, call, but it may be because of a whole trace. And inside those seed files, we save the whole trace, the whole uh, list of calls which uh, produces that crash. The delta reports, well, uh, we simply compare two behaviors of the same application or two behaviors of to different builds, Android builds, in order to see if um, having this image is better, in order, um, so to compare the two images in order to see which one is better from security perspective. Um, if you want to see like a workflow, well, we have the Android device connected to BFAS. Um, BFAS is running and it collects data. It stores all those data in files. And afterwards, after it builds the, the intent calls, files intent calls, it sends them back to the system. And this system may generate, of course, error logs if it's the case. Or you may have also the standalone application. Uh, this is how it looks like. Um, you may see there are like nine features. First, you may select any device under test. You may select particular devices or all the devices which are connected to the Linux machine. You may generate either broadcast intents or simple intents, generate delta reports, and so on. Um, one other important feature I will focus on later is this SQL injection for a specific APK. You may see that through those intents, you may run also SQL injections. Um, a short example, how does a broadcast intent look like? Well, it has uh, this parameter, which is the device ID. That one is a fake one, of course. And as a parameter, it just receives the package name and the broadcast receiver. Well, um, before doing this project, of course, we have done some research. And there were some guys who actually uh, succeed to find some crashes, some native crashes, inside famous apps like uh, Facebook and PayPal, running those kind of broadcast intents. They couldn't handle uh, properly this call, and they crashed. 
Well, a fast intent. Um, we generate them based on some templates. Because first we have uh, tried to generate all the intents. You see that there are uh, six different parameters. And those six parameters may have like between, I don't know, 20 to 60 types of values. And this resulted in billions and billions of combinations. And it's not doable to run those kind of uh, amount of uh, intents through a device. Well, we came up with a solution. And we generated um, 64 different kind of templates. And we have coded uh, this name with 0 and 1. So you may see here template 0, 0, 0, and so on. Uh, all the parameters are not false. So 0 means no false. And 1 will mean false. Well, if you specify that a parameter you don't want to be false, you may also specify a particular list of values. So you, OK, you don't want to be false, but what do you want to be there? And the calls will look like this. So the only false parameter is minus a from here, action. And because I have specified a list with items like act1, it generates an intent with act1 for, the, for this parameter. If not, uh, it simply goes into a specific file and read the values from there. Uh, another example where everything is fuzzed. So you see one is fuzzed. Well, everything is fuzzy there. So every parameter receives fuzz data with, fuzz, uh, with different random uh, length and values. Well, by running those intents, uh, one particular application may crash or not crash. Well, for example, you have here uh, a log from Logcat, an example where an application has crashed. Uh, this is due to a transaction to large exception. Um, the parameter received as action, you see here on the first line, uh, was a very large and fuzzy parameter. And it produces actually a denial of service attack. Um, by running those very large uh, intents and too many, uh, we may succeed to make the device not responsive. If you start to, if you try to open any app, it will automatically close. Um, as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, we have used KV, and we try to make this application stand alone as an Android application. Um, but with this, there are a lot of challenges we are facing, we are still facing, actually. Uh, you see here an example, how does the user interface look until now? Uh, simply you can uh, select a package to test for broadcast intents. And if you select uh, one application, well, you see the result on the right side. Um, every intent call is saved on the locket with uh, F uh, parameter at the beginning with a fatal uh, tag. Uh, and this is uh, because we want to better filter this, uh, these lockets. Um, it's easier. Another example, um, we have succeeded to run SQL injections using intents. We have used for that uh, also a framework is called Drozer. Uh, they uh, published um, an application. It's a password manager application, which is vulnerable to SQL injection. And we have tested also our project against that application in order to see if we are doing properly or not. And for example, you just create uh, your um, credentials for Yahoo and Google and so on. And by using our app also, our project, you may retrieve in plain text the credentials. Um, as my joke uh, stated, there are a lot of exceptions you may find. Unfortunately, not all of them are exploitable. 
So maybe they are not so interesting from an attacker point of view, but still. And um, also, as I said, we may succeed at the denial of service attack. Um, my project wouldn't be possible without help from my colleagues. And I want to mention uh, here Andrea, um, Bogdan, and Christina. Uh, Christina is a student, and she was the person who learned Kiwi in order to export our application to an Android application. Also, you may find our project on GitHub. You may scan the QR code, or you may enter the, the link. Um, I may also tell you some other challenges we have to cope with. Um, for example, if you want to send a lot of data through ADB, um, it has some limitations. And because we wanted to simulate a buffer overflow attack, um, we have created those intent calls, which are very large, and saved it in separate files, and then pushed them to the device and run it from there. This is how we have bypassed the ADB limitations. And um, that was pretty much my presentation. I would like to hear from you some suggestions and any questions, please. Uh, one quick question, maybe I wasn't paying attention, but can you also test uh, tags via content providers with BFAS? Uh, which one? Uh, so can you test some attacks using content providers? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, um, this module for SQL injection it requires access to content providers. And um, it's easier for now to have this, but only using the Linux version of BFAS, not the APK. Uh, we couldn't retrieve the content providers the fully path of the, the URI. The URI. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I know if there is any solution uh, I we would like to hear, we, we couldn't retrieve this okay. yeah thanks any other question <clears throat> okay um, in that case we're going to continue in five minutes uh, with the next session which will be preparing your apps for internet of things so I'll see you back in five minutes thank you thank you, thank you.